What's up, it's Alex from Home Master Kingdom. We're at the Opera House today, and it's a true honor to be joined by the one and only Andreas Kisser from Sepultura. Andreas, how are you, man? Good, good. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So, first of all, welcome back to Toronto. Thanks. So, um, how's your current tour uh, going? You're celebrating 30th anniversary. Oh, it's great, man. Great momentum for us. Uh, 30 years, you know, it's a very special mark uh, for a band that came from Brazil. <laughs> yeah. And we're still here, you know, jamming and, and playing. And momentum is great. The lineup is great. You know, Nuclear Blast, a great label. Yep. Uh, two albums already out. We're still touring for the Mediator, you know, which is great. So uh, the, almost two years now that we're touring for the album. And uh, we did all the great festivals in the world, including Rock in Rio in Las Vegas, yeah, yeah. you know, Download. We're still going back to Europe in in, uh, in July, August to do Bloodstock and Fox yeah, yeah. and Brutal Assault, you yeah. know. So uh, it's great. I mean, uh, we're really stretching, you know, this new album. We went everywhere and uh, it's a great way to celebrate this, this 30 years. I mean, really special. Awesome, awesome. I know that the last uh, North American tour you're supposed to do a couple years ago got canceled because of visa issues, right? Yeah. We almost <laughs> got the same problem this time around, but um, fortunately everything went 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 right. I mean, this this kind of stuff is very uh, unpredictable. You know, yeah. uh, I, I remember the, the, the that tour was canceled because the, the government of U, the United States was frozen for some reason yeah. uh, for. For I don't know how many days or, or weeks and stuff, and everything yeah. was really, you know, uh, I mean, we didn't have time enough, uh, sufficient time really to, yeah. to deal with, with everything. But finally, we're here, you know, uh, I think, uh, it, you know, it, it's been away too much from the release of the album, but you know, we're still here, and uh, you know, uh, better doing now than, than no, not doing at all, you know, for this tour. So, uh, cool. So you started off this tour with an appearance at Rock and Rio Vegas, and at that show you uh, were joined by Steve Vai on stage. Yeah. So that must have been pretty cool. Uh, talk about your uh, experience playing with Steve. Uh, Steve is a, a master, man. He's a, totally. a gentleman, you know, a guy uh, very smart, very down to earth. Uh, one of the maybe the biggest guitar player alive. <laughs> you know, it's a it's, it's something that. Uh, it was great to see that he, he, you know, he accepted that challenge, you know, to, to play with Sepultura, which is a totally different style for him, you know. Uh, first, I mean, we have that Brazilian groove, you know, yeah, percussive-wise, and uh, and it, it's metal, you know, it's trash, and it, it is a kind of a different way of playing, you know, just different. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the two different styles, our style and his style, uh, came along fucking great, you know, it was perfect, much better than we all expected, you know. Yeah. Uh, we were playing percussion there, like a bed for him to improvise on the guitar. And I think he felt great, we felt great. You know, it was just an honor or a privilege to have him on, on stage. It's good to see also Rock in Rio as a Brazilian brand, you yeah. know, coming to the States. Yeah. You know, bringing, I mean, the idea is to bring more Brazilian acts, you know, to play outside Brazil. They did that already in Portugal and Portugal Spain, Spain yeah. you know, and uh, so it's great to be a part. I mean, we have a, a great story with Rock in Rio, you know, we yeah. played there in 91 for the first time, yeah. and then we yeah. played in Lisbon, and you know, so it was great to be a part, and and this, the specific stage, you know, that um, allowed different bands, you know, to, to do stuff, uh, different stuff, you know. Uh, it's called the sunset stage. Yeah. I think in Rock and Rio was called the emotion stage or something like that. Mm -hmm. They changed the name because of uh, uh, sponsor, whatever. But um, in the end, it's the same spirit, you know, to put like a very well-known artist that have like, a, you know, 10, 20, 30 years of a career and put together with different artists that never played before, you know. So, I mean, the idea came to Steve, we know him for a long time and every time Steve came to Brazil, I was there, you know, to see and he always was very nice receiving us backstage and stuff, you know, and I mean, it was just a, a privilege and hopefully we have more opportunities to do that again with him, yeah. Yeah, he's doing... Um He's doing a meet and greet up here uh, in a next week or so, so I'm gonna, ah, I'm gonna, cool. go, I'm gonna go check that out. Say hi to Steve, man. Yeah. I want to ask you about uh, Mediator. Um, you, you produced it with uh, Ross Robinson, who also worked on Roots. Yeah. Um, how, how did it feel to work with uh, Ross again? 
It was great. Ross is a great friend. Uh, you know, Roots, the Roots experience was amazing for everybody that was involved on that experience, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you know, Tem, the time went by and he worked with so many different bands, not only metal or new metal, yeah. you know, with uh, The Cure and Vanilla Ice and many other different stuff, you know. And, um, and Sepultura as well, you know, we changed lineups, you know, we changed labels, we changed producers, we worked with so many different people. Uh, and it was great, you know, to after all this to meet again with him, you know, in a very special momentum. Like I said, you know, with a strong label, we went to the States, you know, to record at his, at his home studio in Venice Beach, which is a beautiful place, a very nice uh, setup that he had there. And we spent like a month there just focus on the album and it was amazing. You know, it's, it's great to work with somebody that you, you know, it feels home, you know, you have a a lot of freedom really to deal with lots of things. He's a kind of uh, a guy who's very uh, spiritual, you know, very organic. You, you talk a lot about uh, the meaning of things, you know, right, and, uh, yeah. and when you when you go there to record, you have such uh, an extra push, you know, because he, that's his mastering, you know, really at the time of recording, really, you know, taking everything out of you, you know, so uh, yeah. breaking the limits really, you know. And, and I think it shows, I mean, it's a very tense album, you know, it's very Ross, <laughs> you yeah. know, lots of effects and a lot of things and, and stuff and and uh, it was great, I mean, it was very well received and it's amazing to play the songs live too, yeah. you know, it's very demanding, you know, we like as a grande came into the group to bring this new amazing ability, you know, yeah. and, and new possibilities to our music and, you know, like I said, it's a very special moment and we're already thinking a new one now, you know, like already almost two years now, uh, yeah. almost, yeah, three years and, uh, and um, it's great, I think it's gonna be a great follow-up, you know, we had this great experience of this whole Mediator tour and stuff and it's all positive, you know, it's great. Nice, it De definitely is a great album, for sure. Yeah. So, I want to step back a couple of years now, back in 2009 and uh, you put out a a solo album, uh, Hubris One and Two. Yeah, and it's more of a folk rock kind of album, right? And it's great. Yeah, it's a lot of acoustic, yeah. a lot of Brazilian, you know, stuff. Brazilian. Yeah. And do you think you'll uh, probably do another one in the future? I hope so, man. Um, I wish this second, the other dimension, will be possible for it because I could do on the other dimension. Because I mean, there's so much stuff, you know, to do. Yeah. Fortunately, you know, uh, I have De La Tierra, which is another group that I sing yeah. in Spanish, you know, yeah. battle. I have another group with my son, the Kisser Clan, you know, we only play covers and stuff and yeah. I do some guitar clinics in Brazil as well, so it's hard really to find that uh, that perfect time really to stop and really do that, you know, but uh, I have a demo, I mean, since uh, the album came out in 2009, you know, so I have many, many little demos that I write stuff all the time, you know, so I have a pretty much a new solo album ready to go, okay. but uh, I, ju I just don't have really the time now, you know, to, to stop and really produce that, but uh, yeah. hopefully in the next year or two, you know, I'm not in a hurry really, you know, yeah. the, I think Ubris was a very special project that I, yeah. I put everything there, you know, like acoustic, instrumental, Portuguese, English, called many friends, you know, to be a part of it, and uh, but this one I want to, I want to do more, I think more like, a, because Hoobies took like four years to make, you know, yeah. it's a double album, many yeah. different studios and stuff. This one I want to just like to focus, you know, stop a, mo a month or two and really do it, you know, yeah. see what, what happens. <laughs> awesome. Cool. You mentioned your, your son, you, you run a radio station back in Brazil, right? With your son? Yeah, I have, I have a radio show in a very uh, big uh, radio station in Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil, 89 FM. And it's every Sunday. It's an hour a week. It's called Pegadas de Andreas Kisser, which is, means the footsteps yep. on, of Andreas Kisser. Yep. And it's me and my son Johan. He's 17 years old, and we play from Beatles to Napalm Death, you know, nice. <laughs> like or the you know the most modern stuff. I mean, we play everything, you know, everything connected to metal, like punk rock, classic rock, or you know, uh, it, it's it's very free, open. I open a lot of uh, space to Brazilian bands, you know, yeah. like metal Brazilian bands that doesn't have the opportunity to, to show their music yeah. anywhere else. And it's very hard to find, you know, the, the the windows there, you know, to show your stuff. And you, it's, it's goes like three years now that I'm doing the show and it's awesome. I enjoy a lot. It's a great, 
sometimes I do it live when I'm in Brazil, but most of the time I pre-record the show. I just send it today, you know, actually, uh, the, my next show that I recorded here, an interview with Destruction. I was doing the interview with them, you oh, know. Nice. And uh, it's cool, you know, it's, it's fun. I, I think it's a, it's a lot of work too, but uh, it's something very different from my music world. I, I still deal with music, but, uh, you know, I like the environment of a radio uh, station, and you know, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, you just mentioned you did a one with destruction. Is it more like a podcast? Yeah, it, it stayed there. You know, it stays there. I mean, it goes live every Sunday f from seven to eight in Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo time, yep. and uh, you can uh, listen live as well. It's radiorock.com.br. Um, but you have all the, the the shows there from day one. You know, nice. I'll have to check it out. Sure. Radiorock.com.br. Radiorock.com. You heard that. <laughs> So I want to step back uh, another couple of years. So um, you're a guy that that can say you actually toured with the Big Four because back in 2011 on the Big Four European tour, you covered for Scott Ian yeah. when he had to stay home when his son was born. Yeah. Uh, talk about the experience of touring with uh, Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, and Anthrax. Oh man, it was it was beautiful, man. Because well, you're because you're a big fan. Oh right? yeah. I mean, I mean, who who is? I'm it, here right? because of them. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all here because of them. Yeah. You know? Pretty much. It's uh, it was such a privilege, you know, when Scott called me and, and and told me about the possibility, and it was six months before, you know, so I had really a good period of time to prepare myself and to do five big four shows plus another shows in Europe, <coughs> uh, headline shows, you know, on track. So I, I I needed to learn some of the songs. I I knew, you know, some Antrax stuff from my, yep. you know. My early days, you know, Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, Anthrax, Exodus, you know, yep. Destruction, Creator, Testament. all that, Testament, you yeah. know, that's my, my school, yeah. you know. So um, I was so surprised and so happy, you know, because how many guitar players in the world does Scott Ian knows, you know, it's like yeah. he knows the world and uh, I, I feel so privileged, you know, for him to, to think about my name and yeah. he said, yeah, you, you are the right guy to do this and uh, I say yes right away, of course, you know, it was a big experience, you know, for me and I blocked the dates on Second Tour Touring. Actually at the end, on the last show Antrax did, was the first show that I rejoined Sepultura to continue the tour with Sepultura. Oh. So I played twice on the same night, yeah. it was Sepultura and then Antrax, you know. Nice. But, um, you know, I, I felt home with them, you know, they, they really... Uh, the, the great brothers, great friends, and great musicians, you know, and uh, to be there with jamming at, with everybody at the end, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, even Diamond Head, you know, yeah. you know it's fucking yeah. insane, man, you know, it's like a, it, it, it was great to, to, to have a little part of the South America there, you know, yeah. Brazil, representing, yeah. you know, Big Four and stuff, yeah. and uh, it's, it's uh, I'm very thankful, you know, for, for that to, to happen, it was two weeks, magical two weeks for, for me, yeah. it was great. And right now, Megadeth just injected some Brazilian blood with yeah. Kiko from, from Angra. Finally, they found out yeah. <laughs> the Brazilian source of it, uh, you know. Of course. But that's great for the, the country, man. You know, yep. we have Achilles Priester as well, yep. you know, playing with Primal Fear and so yep. many different bands. Yeah. And, uh, um, and and it's great to see the Brazilian musician having this opportunity because, you know, it is a very musical country, uh, have their own you know, we have their our own kind of groove and yep. you know melodies and stuff that can help. You know, it helped a lot Sepultura to to achieve our own original yeah. sound. You for know, sure, yeah. and uh, it'd be great. You know, to I think uh, it's great for Megadeth and for Kiko as well. Yeah. For both, I mean, for Kiko is insane. You know, like oh, yeah. a, a amazing professional, yeah, amazing yeah. musician. Uh, you know, it's uh, I'm happy to see. Uh, is paying off all the hard work that he put and yep. the study and everything you know he's a, a great guy he deserved that you know and for Megadeth as well yeah. you know it's great to see that Kiko is gonna join and gonna put some of the Brazilian elements there naturally because yeah. he is from Brazil you know yep. so uh, I'm very curious you know to to listen to this album and very happy for both of them you know very good friends of Dave Ellison especially yep. you know and uh, very happy for all of them nice I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the album. Yeah, well. it'll be great. I want to ask you: Has there ever been talk about a, a Sepultura documentary? Yes, we actually we're working on it. Uh, actually, we have this director from Brazil. Uh, he's with us 
for the last four or five years almost and he's been following us and collecting you know uh, for interviews and with fans and people that used to work with us and you know musicians and everything and uh, he, he you know he was with us in in Indonesia in Europe and the States and everywhere you know uh, recording uh, the, the the departure of Gian Dolabella or drummer and Eloy he you know he he, he got everything there you know um, and still is still on the making you know still some stuff to do I gave all my personal archives for him and Paulo as well you know old stuff and new stuff and yep. it's gonna be cool I think it's gonna be a interesting documentary to see why you know why we still here yeah. <laughs> after so many changes you know yeah. not only inside the band but outside you know like yeah. uh, from vinyl to CD CD to download and yeah. grunge and new metal and you know crisis yeah. we're still here you know yeah. and uh, we're still jamming <laughs> enjoying what we're doing and to show this amazing uh, career you know yeah. a band from Brazil yeah. We visited 73 countries so far, yeah. you know, in the 30 years of a career. It's amazing, you know, Mark. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to be very interesting, not only for the metal fan or a Sepultura fan, but for a general, you know, to see this amazing uh, story, which is very unique, you know, yeah. from a Brazilian band to play this style of music coming from a, a country like Brazil and, you know, going everywhere. Nice, nice. Hopefully. I don't know when it's gonna be done, uh, but uh, it's like a, you know it has to be right, you know. We cannot yeah. really rush. So we're working, working, you know, to be ready uh, to the end of the year. But I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, don't, don't rush it. Don't yeah, rush. we're gonna do it. It's always so, gonna, always best not to rush. Yeah, so. perfect. Yeah. All right. So um, to wrap things up, uh, so it's like it's, we were talking about this earlier. It's been a couple of years since uh, Mediator came out. And you got a couple new songs coming out. You got a song called Dark Side out right now on the internet, yeah. and one called Under the Skin that will be be available soon. Um, are you guys like you guys demoing some new material for the next album? No, yet. I mean, uh, this Dark Side was a, a very specific project for this uh, book uh, company. Yeah, they called Dark Side and stuff, yeah. and we we did this jingle for them. You know, it's a very short. Uh, songs like a minute 20 seconds seconds or so yeah, it's short and it's cool you know yeah. we did it on practice like really in five minutes and I love that kind of stuff you know just like a, a bleh, an explosion <laughs> like a vomit <laughs> it was like yes yeah, it's there you know um, and Sepultura under my skin it's a it's a song that we did especially to our fans you know the fans especially who have the tattoo you know that's the entrance, yeah, the entrance right yeah. <laughs> and um, and we did the song and it's coming out now on June 5th only in vinyl 7 inch and digital nice and uh, we wrote for the, our fans you know to celebrate 30 years lately or well this last 10 15 years uh, we see so many people with such sepultura tattoos you know yeah. it really exploded that yeah. I mean I mean maiden fans you know they have and stuff and uh, you know Ramones and stuff but uh, you know you see the sepultura fan you know, to, to put a mark like in the skin, it's very special, you know, so uh, so we wrote the song for them, you know, it's coming out on June 5th, but we're already playing live, you know, so we're gonna jam tonight, and it's great, it's a great song to play live too. Nice. Awesome. All right, that's all I got, so all right, thanks man. very much. Thank you. So, do you have a closing message to the fans? Thanks for the support, you know, Sepultura is here 30 years because of you. And uh, lovers or haters, we respect you all. Thanks for all, you know. And uh, keep in touch. I, you know, aware we're gonna be working on the new material very soon. But it's great to be here. Thanks for all. Awesome. So once again, obrigado. And uh, be sure to look out for uh, new Sepultura music uh, coming soon in the near future. Uh, I'm Alex. You're watching from MasterKingdom.com. See you next time.